I'm John Stokes from Holland Patton, New York, and I built R2-D2. Which we can't interview because apparently he's got a case of learning guys. R R2, yeah, R2 has a sore transistor or something, <laughs> something today, and uh, not sure why. He was talking earlier today, but uh, there's always going to be, uh, you know, some little glitch in a live performance like this, and uh, I guess that was our Apollo 13 moment for today. He's doing his lights blinking. It was like on my voice voice command R2D2. Well, exactly. But it still seems to be moving around okay. Uh, he does roll. He he normally makes noise. His dome spins. He lights up. Uh, basically, does the, the the primary functions of the uh, screen used droids. Uh, none of the crazy stuff that was CGI like uh, flying or walking upstairs. There's it's no impossible. Little, there's no little guy sitting in there. Not at this time. No, no. We let him out. How long did it, did it take to, um, to put it together? I'm kind of a slow poke. It took me six years. I know people have done it in under a year. Uh, really, for me, it was a question of finances. Scrape together a little money, buy one big part. Scrape together a little money, buy another big, you know, the dome, the frame, kind of collecting the parts from the astromech.net group as they were provided and uh, putting it all together bit by bit. So why did you go through all the trouble to, in order to build the, your own R2-D2? I love the character. Uh, R2 is the hero of Star Wars. He saves Luke's neck numerous times in the original movie. And uh, Han and Leia and Chewbacca uh, uh, repeatedly fixing the hyperdrive when everyone thinks they're doomed. Uh, he's, 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 he's the hero of the movie, and um, I didn't fit in the C-3PO suit. <laughs> Do you, do you usually um, do you make robotics or machines? Or no, no. Um, I have. Um, I'm not a robotics guy by trade. Um, I uh, I studied drafting in college, um, mechanical drafting, uh, and I have uh, sort of a background. My father was a, a woodworking hobbyist, so I'm I'm familiar with tools, and I was able to. Uh, Basically, I can, uh, the, really the, the primary tool I needed for this was a screwdriver. Um, a lot of these parts, again, came through, through the group, uh, through the group offerings of parts, and uh, a lot of it just bolts together, or in my case was uh, clear silicone RTV together. Um, the inside of the dome is, is mostly duct tape. So, does, it, does you have uh, that, the glitch that's happened now, does that have, happen quite a bit? Or? No, no. Uh, first time I've lost sound on him. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, as he's, I've had him running for four years now um, without that particular incident. It seems everywhere I go, some little thing goes wrong. Last show I did, I forgot the screws to put the back door on. <laughs> you know, little stupid things. How much of uh, R2 was remote control and how much of it is programming? Um, he, well, the blinky lights are programming. Uh, the sound, which unfortunately can't hear, involved a little bit of programming but it was something someone else figured out and I just sort of copied what they did, downloaded the, the, um, the code and inserted it into the chip the way they told me to. Um, like I say, the, 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 the blinky lights are programmed, but it was nothing I did. It was part of the way the, the thing was, the, the, the guy who made the kit for the lights programmed the chips. Yeah. So it was just soldering it together. Um, basically, I, I, I think of him as just a large radio controlled toy. He's just an oversized radio controlled car with three channels for the drive and the steering and the spinning of the dome. It's not moving. Does the head, head move? From, yes, yes. Uh, so many different pieces uh, do you have that operate? Well, we've got, right now we've got the dome and the, uh, the, the, the driving, the foot motors. Um, nothing pops out just yet. Now is that something you want to put in in the future? Um, I'd like to animate the utility arms on the front. They open up, but they're not motorized. And I think that would be a cool thing to have open up. That gives them a little more life. Let's, pa let's pause for one second. <laughs> you want to step into the photo? It's, it's quite all right. We're, we're just, oh, no, we're just that's BS okay. That's okay. No, no, if, 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 if that's all right. I don't have my camera on me. And we took a picture already. So okay. Come on, Reese. Now, does this make any noises or, or anything? He's supposed to, but uh, unfortunately, he's got a sore transistor or something today. Oh, I'm okay. I'm not sure what happened. Well, earlier today he was talking, but... No, uh, he's got a sore throat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then, actually, the midget when I, died inside. No, actually, when I came in at 10 o'clock... He was chirping then. He was beeping at me, actually, and I went, but that's cool, man. Now, you made this yourself? Now, how did you make this? We're talking uh, Well, what piece of the time? If you don't mind me, you're 
I'll hand over the mic. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, the dome was, is made of two layers. If you run a finger right along here, you'll see that's the inner layer and that's the outer layer. Okay. This is also the outer layer, but there's like a little step down right there. Yeah. And um, it's made in two layers. It was all laser cut at a shop that formed the dome in aluminum. Uh, the, uh, the radar eye is plastic resin. The projectors are, the arms, most of the details. At some point I said the plastic, I had to have metal for these because people do stuff like flick the, uh, flick the vents right. there and they pop apart if they're made of plastic. So I went for the aluminum ones. They're little flat plates. They're not hard to make. That's a good question. It took me about six years to put it together. Um, I know people have done it in shorter period of time. I'm repeating myself. Uh, but uh, it's uh, you know, a labor of love. You stick with it. Do it's something. Like you always find new ways how to add things and things like that. One piece at a time, like, uh, like Johnny Cash's uh, Cadillac. No, but this is cool, though. Actually, when I went through the line to get my ticket, it was actually beeping at me. I thought that it was so cool. Mm -hmm. I didn't even see you there. I was wondering who was doing it. Yep. How do you I've become a stealth ninja. <laughs> you don't see me. How long did it take you to practice working the remote control where nobody can well, see you? Well, now that, that's, that's the one concession I will make to, that, that I, I have a little bit of talent. I've, um, I've played with radio control cars since I was a little kid and got into them as a hobby long before I started R2. So I understand the idea of, of uh, the speeds necessary. And, you know, uh, also with my, I have a bunch of kids, small kids at home, so... I knew it was very important not to run them over with the 150 pound robot. So, so when I come out in public, I try and keep the same uh, decorum to uh, to R2s to, to make sure that he that he uh, protects his little fans. So, so you, you just take him around to conventions? And yeah. Well, I've, I've we've been to a couple of conventions. We've been to uh, uh, you know libraries, hospitals, that sort of thing for uh, charity functions. Do a lot of work with the 501st and. Uh, Someone uh, told me that, that there was supposed to be an R2 here, but he couldn't make it for some reason. So I, I filled in, dropped in, for, because I know the guy and he's a good friend. So I said, hey, I'll take your spot, no problem. And I showed up here at uh, Connecticut Comic Con 2012. And uh, R2 and I are having a great time. We're seeing an amaz amazing group of people in amazing costumes. Um, every a lot of Batman people out this year. You, I see yeah. you've got the Batman hat we're, on. There. We're still waiting for the Batmobiles to show up. Yes, if only. It's coming in from New Jersey. They're coming from New, New Jersey, so it's. Oh really? Yeah, and I guess they're actually driving them down here. So which you know, saving saying so. Which which Batman is he be able to use? to the sixty six? They're bringing the sixty six and the uh, the first Burton movie. You can't drive that on a freeway, can you? I don't. That's what I'm. I would have to be on a flat on a flatbed trailer. That was trying to wonder. That's trying to wonder myself. I didn't think that thing was street legal. Yeah. But and it certainly it has no turn signals. Um, mm -hmm. Yikes. Well, and it's supposed we, to be Black Beauty too from the Green Hornet. Oh, from the, the Green Hornet. That's yeah. So that's, that'd be real. Okay. Um, any other questions? Uh, yeah, um, where can they find people find out if they want to see your R2 or if they want to maybe look about to building their own? Okay. Astromax. Um. If you like my R2 and are interested in building your own, you can go to astromech.net or check out the R2 Builders Group at Yahoo under the uh, Movie Groups section. Uh, either one of those two sister groups can uh, help you find out uh, where you can get parts, where you can get blueprints, uh, what uh, the, the, the limited number of found materials that can be used in R2. Uh, mine's a hodgepodge of, of materials, aluminum, steel, plastic, uh, wood, even some glass. Um, some of the better R2, the, the high-end R2s are all aluminum. The lower-end R2s are mostly styrene. Once you see them running, you don't know the difference. You know, uh, it's uh, it's all about what you're willing to spend, what you want to spend, what you can spend. Um, there's no wrong way to build a droid. Uh, there's only the right way to love them. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. You're quite welcome. And thank you for your time, R2. Uh, he should, but he's not beeping right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I'll be getting better soon, R2. Does he beep? <laughs> he, he's supposed to. Be.